You need all the food before we start, girl? Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another one of our videos. As you guys see from the title of this video, we are gonna do uh, something a little different. Story time. We got some buffalo wild wings, salt and vinegar, and then chipotle barbecue. We're just gonna tell you guys a story about the time I went to prison, how it led up to that point, and we have an audience here as well. We have Katrina, Matt, and Amanda. We should probably do Hello. Another video. If you guys want to see like another video with Matt and Amanda in it, or maybe Katrina, we can do that. Comment down below. Maybe like a couples uh, type thing. I want to thing. do like a couples Q and A video. Erica was talking about it. She wants. Because you it. guys are like a long old couple. Old. Well, yeah, we've been together for 15 years. You guys are old. Old. That's old. old couple. <laughs> but we're gonna sit here, tell stories, try not to smack our food. But if you guys don't like watching people eat, just don't watch the video. Damn. But like, yeah. Damn. Look at you, you know, giving me the side eye. <laughs> Let me get one wing down before we start. Oh yeah, this is definitely extra seasoning. Mm -hmm. I asked for extra seasoning on this, and they usually don't do it. And the time they do it, I have all these extra seasonings for nothing. So. Oh, they give you on the side too and on it? Yeah, because I assumed that they didn't put it on it. That sound in the background is an air fryer. Okay. So, this happened. It was the yeah. year of what? I think it was 2016. That's my, like, I was bad. Like, that was, like, my, my worst year ever. Were you fat? Eh. I wasn't mad if I was fat. Dang. No, I'm just asking. Wait, did you have a girlfriend? <laughs> no, I was an F boy. So you didn't have a girlfriend? No. So you had girlfriends? Yes. That was like my F-boy phase. And I was in a, a car crew, multiple ones. So I, I got into cars around that time, like really into cars. I met a lot of people. I remember there was a car meet. I was just driving by, like I remember like driving past it like 10 times because I was so nervous. I didn't know what to say. So I eventually just pulled up to the car meet and Introduced myself. I was awkward as hell. I'm just I was really bad at like talking to people because I really didn't do anything like social wise So I went there and met a couple people long story short I joined their car group and Things went downhill from there. I thought they were a good influence, but I was just trying to fit in and just try to do what they were doing and they weren't good people there was a good portion of them that were like good, but it's not like some Fast and Furious type stuff. Like we weren't robbing like trucks and for radios and stuff like that. They won't make them bad. Like they were bad influence, like uh, speeding wise. Like they would always want to drive recklessly, speed, and just like we would, I would stay out all night. Like I basically had no life. That was my phase where I was living with my parents. My dad was still alive, and I was just like not going home. I wasn't working on a job either. You didn't work? No. Then how did you pay for your civic? Long story. I was like, I was a bum. I was bumming mon like money off of people too. Off like, who? 2016 was like my worst year ever. Who? Just friends in the group. So? I don't even know how I made money. I wasn't even like doing anything weird either. So I that's how you pay for your civic? Wait, well, is it the thing. civic? Yeah, it was the Civic. The that Civic, you were driving? Yes. The Civic, I was bad. I didn't have a job. And I was behind on car payments. Like, it was probably like a year. Something like that. Terrible. But I, was, I was dumb. I really made a lot of bad decisions because my brother co signed for that too. And I kind of like effed him over with that. It was a really bad decision on my part. Yeah. I just didn't really know what I was doing. I was just thinking of like, hey, it's a, it's a, it's a car. Cool. I was thinking of like the long run. I didn't really know much about it then. But interesting. Yeah. I would stay out till like the next morning. Sometimes I'm sleeping on the beach with like a bunch of other people too. <laughs> Just wake up, do more car stuff. What car stuff? Like, just drive around the oceanfront. I'm so vain. Uh, like we really didn't do anything. And every time I went somewhere, there was this a friend of mine. His name was Dwayne. 
Her name was Dwayne. No, his name was Dwayne. Oh. Did I say her? <laughs> yes. I said her. <laughs> but his name is Dwayne. Dwayne. And he he was like my sugar <laughs> daddy. <laughs> Like, I didn't do nothing about it. I wasn't like in the dudes. Ah. I mean, no shame to like, are you guys or nothing, but like me and him were just friends and he always offered to pay for my stuff. So he, he was like not really encouraging me to get a job. He said, yo, let's go out. I was like, I'm broke. I got you. It was like one of those type things. Oh, okay. So he eventually started paying for like my gas, for the car. He started paying for car parts for my car. And I just thought I was like the shit having a souped up car. Nothing even crazy, just like cosmetic stuff on the car. And, uh, Terrible. there was this one, uh, another one of my friends, uh, her name's Asia. And I'll, I think she watches my vlogs, actually, because I remember not too long ago, she messaged me asking some questions about YouTube. Uh -huh. And I, I gave her tips, whatnot, whatever. But I forgot what we were doing that night. I think we went to a car meet out in Hampton which is like, what, 30 minutes away? Uh -huh. And then we left the car meet pretty late. And she she drives a, uh, well, used to, I don't know if she still has it, a Nissan 350Z. It's either 350 or 370Z. And obviously it's 10 times faster than my Civic. It wasn't even an SI Civic too. It was just a regular Civic, not even manual. And I'm over here trying to race her, and we start racing, and obviously she smokes me. I don't even know how my car almost got up to 100 on the highway. And I remember I was in the right lane. She was all the way to the left of the Hove line. H-O-B line. The Hove lane. The Hove, Hove lane. The Hove lane. And I remember we passed uh, Rosemont, if you guys live here. And there's like this little hump part and like you can't see the cops chilling like right at the corner. So two cops are just chilling there. They have one guy already pulled over and uh, she's in front of me. She's gone. Uh, she's probably like six cars ahead of me. And then I see the cops and it's too late at that point. Like obviously they clocked us going over the speed limit. And then I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like freaking out. She just, she keeps going. I can't even like communicate with her because we used to use this app called Waze. And we would like, oh yeah. 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 We would use that as like a walkie talkie type thing. Mm -hmm. So I, after that hump goes, I don't see lights until like five minutes later, the cops are right behind me. I'm like, oh my God, he's like catching up to me. But after you passed the cop, were you still speeding? Yeah. Why there was no, there was no time to like slow down. Like I was already caught, you know. Okay. There's there. <laughs> there was, there was no time to react to slow down. Like, it's just way past that. So the cops like ran on my tail. I'm just like, nah, like I'm not gonna outrun this. Maybe she could, but not me. So I pull over, all the way over to the right, near first colonial. Two cops. Cop comes to me, not even like aggressive, he's like fully calm. He's like, dang, I just clocked you at 85. And he was like, oh, where's uh, where's your friend going? I was like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, oh, so that was your friend? I was like, no, this girl was like chasing me. So I was trying to like get away from her. Wow, you blamed it on her? I didn't blame it on her. I just played dumb. Cause they, they just assumed that we were together. Mm -hmm. And I just told the cop, like, yeah, I don't know who that is. Like, they were just, like, driving really aggressively, like, following Whose me. Whose idea was it to race in the first place? Honestly, I want to say me, oh. but I don't think, I don't remember. Like I said, it's 2016. Oh, wait, no. That's when I was with, Ar with Arlene. So you did have a girlfriend? Yeah, I remember. Because after I got the ticket, they gave me a ticket for speeding. And I had a, I had a court date and all this stuff. So uh, I remember calling her and I was just like, I was like, I fucked up. <laughs> I was like, I, I fucked up. And she was just like, you're done, you're stupid. I told you this car stuff is stupid. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, yeah, I fucked up. That's my, that's my fault. Terrible. So then Terrible. I had a court date and all that. And I don't even think I went to the, the court date. So I think they, uh, 
they put a warrant out for my arrest. What? Yeah. But then I was like freaking out because then I got a letter in the mail saying that. Why didn't you go to the court? No, because I was scared. I thought they were going to put me in jail. Immediately? Immediately, like right on the spot. You don't go to jail for speeding. I did. But <laughs> but for a while. though. And the title goes to jail. Yeah. <laughs> but you had the option. I did, yes. So talk about that. Okay, so. Oh, I remember right now. Okay. So I played dumb. Like I didn't get the like the other letter telling me like the date when to go in for the hearing. And I remember uh, getting home from somewhere I don't remember exactly, but there was a lady standing there with a piece of paper. And she she gave me in her so and she's like, Oh are you are you Patrick Dawes? I was like, Yeah. And she's like, Oh here you go. Be there. Oh, that's called something. I don't know what it's called. I forgot do you guys know what that's called? Uh <sighs> I hear yeah, hand, they have the hand. Yeah, they hand it to you. Say you say it. And yeah, like yeah. your sentence or something. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, comment down below because I would really like to know again what that is. Because it happens again. Yeah. So at that point, it was bad because I didn't show up to the first one. So uh, they told me I need an attorney or something, or because I had a warrant for my arrest already. So I needed a good reason, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was freaking. How old? Was that four years ago? No. How old are you right now? 28? 28. You're like 24? Mm -hmm. I was still pretty stupid. I'm still stupid to this day. Mm. You said the same. Hmm? said the same. So, I go to uh, the hearing and my attorney pulls me out. She's like, you, you basically just have to like you're, say you're guilty. And... I, I lied. I remember lying to my attorney, and I was like, "Uh, like I, I really can't go to jail. Like I can't have this on my record. Um, I'm trying to join the military." I remember a friend of mine in my car group told me that. He said, "Just say you're trying to join the military, and they'll they really like military people, and they'll let you off with a warning, whatever." So I did that, and they kept pushing my thing back, my hearing, because my. Uh, I forgot what happened, but I remember I had three different hearings. So it was like the first one, second one. So much for just speeding? Yeah, I mean, it's my fault, though, because I didn't show up and I kept pushing it back. I took a mini break. <laughs> okay, so let me just get back. Let me just get to the point and uh, talk Well, about first of all, no. I'm very disappointed. Why? Why didn't your girlfriend tell you to show up to court? I'm pretty sure she did. I was just scared. I would have dragged you there. I would have threatened you. Yeah, this is good. Mm. She wanted you to be locked up. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, Continue. We have a lot of food left, so we're probably not going to be able to finish this. So. Uh, the third time I go in, that's where everything pops off. I think I almost cried too. But I was I was like the only one in there too, so it was like it was kind of okay that I was like tearing up a little bit. So my attorney did all the talking like that, and the judge asked me, "Say, so you're trying to join the military?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm trying to get my life together." Blah, blah blah. You know, just lying to him straight up to his face. He's like, "Okay." I was like, "Yeah, this looks like this is like your first speeding ticket." You know what? Uh, we can come to an agreement here. He's like, uh, so you have two choices. You can either go a whole year, basically like it's like probation. Yeah. And if I get any ticket, like for even a headlight out <laughs> on my car, they would put me in jail for 30 days. So I was like, damn, I'm probably gonna mess up again because like I'm not in a good group of people right now. And that's another story I have to tell after. And the second option was to do uh, two days and it won't be on my record. So then I was like, you know what? And my attorney was talking to me, he was like, you, you should just do the two days to play it safe because 30 days is a long time. And I'm glad I did that because it was, it was crazy. It wasn't even like a, what do you call it? It wasn't like a legit jail, it was just like prison. No, I think 
Prison isn't there is a different, different one. I think jail is like, jail is like mining. I don't know. I don't know the difference. I think it's jail that you went to. I mean, I, I guess that's a good thing that we don't know that. <laughs> so we don't go there. Jail is the one at the station. Jail? Different so prison okay, is... Okay, so jail is the one that you went to. I mean, they're not going to put you in like a big, crazy one because that's where they send like long term. So that's prison. Yeah. Well, I think they're prison's both jail. Long -term. Go to well, jail. the one I went to prison's long -term. was like a, a yard thingy. Like there was a center part where everyone, there was cells all around it. And like there was a center area where everyone gets out and chill. That's like what I wanted to. I don't really know the difference. If you guys know, comment down below. So I chose to do the two days and they gave me a date to come in. And I was like so scared, dude. Like I didn't know what to expect because obviously I didn't go to jail before. So the day comes and I'm running kind of late to the day I'm supposed to come to jail. So I'm like, I'm like always late for everything. Who took you to jail? Myself. How? You walked? No, I drove. I still have my license, surprisingly. No, no, actually, that, I think I got my license taken away. Yeah. And I was still driving with no license. You're terrible. I know. It was bad. So I remember there was a Harris Teeter across the street from the jails. And I parked my car there. It, it probably could have got towed. Because I was going to be there for two days. I was just like, man, whatever. I went around the park because I was running late. So I go into... The, the court, it's like a maze, like our courthouse. And then uh, I go to the wrong place. I'm like, yeah, I'm here to like uh, basically turn myself in, whatever. And she's like, uh, you're in the wrong place and you're late. You know if you're late, they will extend your, your time? I was like, are you kidding me? Are you freaking serious? Like, what am I doing two days? So he's like, you better run. So I run and then I remember there's this big door, metal door. It's so intimidating. It was me and one other guy. And all I hear through the speakers like step back. Then you hear the door just go. <laughs> How? He's like step back. He goes. Yeah. Bzzz. <laughs> Not like a like a laser door or whatever. But it opens. You just see a big guy just come out. He's like, he takes my paper and just throws it. It was so awkward. So as soon as I walk in, the guy goes another way, I guess, and then he, I go into this room to the left. He's like, all right, take your clothes off. Yeah, just straight up. Yeah, just took my clothes off. I didn't know. So here's a tip. If you guys ever go to prison, you guys know, wear white socks. Wear white underwear. Why? You can't wear regular underwear there. It has to be white. What do you mean? What do you mean? I don't, I don't know why. Like, like why if, white? Why white? I don't know. Cause I noticed that when the other guy that was with me, he had white socks on, the slippers, and. He, he was wearing like pretty much everything white. I was like, what's that? Like, it's because we're all white. And then the cop, the officer was like, I was like, nope, you gotta take off all your underwear. So I was basically nude underneath the whole suit. Oh, you didn't have time. underwear underneath no. your suit? That's you nasty. I was just wearing the straight up orange. But if you had white, you got to keep it on. Yes. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. So I take off all my clothes and then hmm. he's just feeling, checking, making sure I don't have like, did they do the bend down coughing thing? Yes. I had, he was like, all right, crouch down and cough. I was like, <gasps> I felt like I was like Megan the Stallion knees. <laughs> 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 Getting down, the, <laughs> he's like, louder. <laughs> what is that for? It's to, uh, I think to check if it you unclenches, I think. Your butt to yeah. see if you snuck anything. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like if, you're, if, you're, if you're sneaking anything. So when you cough, it lets the tension loose or whatever. So do that. And everyone, like the sure. cops look at me, it's like, dang, your first time? I was like, yeah. And it's like awkward. And they're like, everyone knows it's your first time. Because if you're not wearing white socks, they're gonna pick on you. And that's exactly what they did. So I remember they're intimidating me. I'm walking. I'm just like, damn, dude, like, what, what did I get myself into? They take me to this door and open it, and there's just like a yard. Just like probably 10 tables, and there's a big screen TV. I just see people on their sales, uh, their cells. Just looking down at me, like, what the hell? So they take me to my cell, and I have, uh, there's a white guy, and there's a black guy. Really old white guy. And then, uh, the black guy's just like, oh, he's so weird, and that's another story tip. So I get in there, and just, like, introducing themselves, and then I'm just, they, they both have the, the bunk. So there's only one bunk in there. I'm like, what the hell am I gonna sleep? He pulls out a mat, like, the mat is probably like this. <laughs> it's a sleeping mat. 
Like, his mind will not even sleep on nothing. He just like throws on the ground and like, you're sleeping there. What? Yeah. Was there like, a toilet in there? There was a toilet, and that's the worst part because, okay. Everyone sees you using yeah, the toilet. Yeah, everyone sees you using the toilet. I remember, it was like a Wait, field you trip. Remember. A field trip. Field trip, yeah. That's exactly how it is. So like, here's the toilet. What? Here's my mat. If someone sat in the toilet, his foot is this close to my face. <laughs> And the, the white dude took a dump. Yeah. Man, I remember, and it smelled so bad. It was so bad. Like, I didn't even use the bathroom. I used the bathroom to go pee, that was it. And it was just so awkward. But they made it to where like, they have a sheet, they use their own sheet, and they cover off the toilet uh, for part. a little bit of privacy. A little bit of privacy, yeah, but it didn't matter. You, you hear everything, so you might as well see it. <laughs> <laughs> First whole day, I didn't use the bathroom at all, because I was just like, what the hell am I getting myself into? And then, uh, I guess you don't, you don't know what time it is. Like I don't, I, you don't have your phone. I remember I had a card that had my uh, picture or whatever on it, my cell number, and that's how you know like we're so obsessed with technology because I was I would lay down and like you literally have nothing to do. I'm like not trying to talk to nobody. I'm just trying to keep to myself and get it over with. So I'm sitting there on this freaking mat. <laughs> I'm using my cell card like it's a cell phone. Like I'm sitting there trying to like put my passcode in because I'm like so used to technology and stuff like that and then uh, whatever the next morning comes I hear the cell door open and we got to start cleaning and mopping up the floors and stuff like that so we do that and then it's lunchtime and I remember standing in line everyone's just like looking at me and they, they they're all talking amongst each other and they, there's like obviously oh this guy's fresh meat I'm like in the back of the line one dude comes up to me he's like yo come on He's like, what the heck? I'm not, I'm fine right here. He's like, no, come on. He's like, fuck this. Like, come to the front. He takes me to the front of the line, gets me my food. He's like, you're with me now. I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, you were adopted by a crib. <laughs> I was, a, yeah, basically, I was adopted. Like, just imagine like a puppy in the shelter and he's just getting picked up by somebody. As soon as I get to the table, he, they take all my food. <laughs> wow, so you're super. And I was like, no, he, no, he was trying. He took my cornbread. I was like, that's fine, you can have that. <laughs> and he took my veggies at the time. I was like, no, you can have that. And I remember it was like uh, some type of patty. I don't know what it was. But, but he was trying to take my meat, and I was like, no, bro, I need my protein. <laughs> he was trying to take your meat. Yeah, he was trying to take all my food. Yeah, I was like, no, dude, I need that. And then so was like, I was thinking in my head, I was like, did I just really just tell this guy, no? I didn't know what was in that. I thought I was gonna shank. I was like, dang, dude. I'm like, I probably shouldn't have said that. And then he said, oh, okay, okay. He was nice about it. I was like, whew, I'm off the hook. And then the day goes on, and I, I'm eating my food. The funniest part of the whole thing, I see, I look over my shoulder, and I see this dude's playing chess. And I look at the chess pieces. I'm like, wow, these guys really gave them chess pieces, like they're metal. And then I look closely. I'm like, wait, what the heck? <laughs> oh, no. Is that toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> they made the chess things out of toilet Ooh. paper and toothpaste. Ooh, and wait, what? Yeah, this is me. I look over. I'm like, did you guys make that? <laughs> And he's like, yeah, man, a buddy of mine, he, he made these from in the cell. <laughs> and I remember picking one up, and it was the queen. And I'm looking up, damn, they even got the titties right. <laughs> like, they were like, there was detail on everything. The queen does not have boobies. They made it have boobies, oh. <laughs> They put, like, detail on everything. Like, it was, like, some crazy work. I was like, dang, and, like, I was like, y'all don't even deserve to be in here. <laughs> I was like, that's really good work. And there's like, yeah, thanks, man. So after that happened, we get called back into the cell, whatever. Next day passes. I'm like, okay. Was that? All? I'm hoping like that was a whole day, whatever. And it was. It just felt like a week, basically. Like, two days there felt like a week. So the second day comes, and I get out, and I notice there's <laughs> no. In the middle of the night, for the first the first night, I remember waking up, and the black guy was just. You know the cell doors? Mm -hmm. I don't know what time it was, but I thought he was possessed. <laughs> He's looking out the thing, just going. <laughs> and I'm looking up at the, at the white guy. I'm like, bro, is he okay? He's like, yeah, he does that sometimes. I'm like, what the heck? He's just sitting there looking through like. 
I thought he was like a zombie or something. And like, I thought like he was worse. But the white guys is just like taking dumps 24 7. Mm -hmm. The place smelt so bad. I'm like, damn, dude. You're over here just, you're eating nothing. What are you like pooping out? So, and then the next day comes here, the doors open, blah, blah, blah. Do the same thing, chores, blah. And then I notice one of the guys in there that's been in there the longest. I forget his name, but I know that he passed away. I know. Because I found out from, from uh, some friends. It's super sad because he was such a good guy. I used to cook with him at the Hilton. I forget his name. I wish I remembered his name. But I found out from a friend that it was his, it was her, uh, uh, I think it was uncle. I forget his name, but he basically like helped me the rest of the stay. He's been in that cell unit or whatever for I think two years. And I wondered where he was. Cause like, I remember one day at the Hilton, he just didn't show up and I was like, well, you know, whatever happened to blah, blah, blah. And they just never told me what happened. But he's been there for two years and he came to me and said, yo, I remember you, you used to work with me at the Hilton. And as soon as everyone saw in the cell, there was like 50 people there. As soon as everyone saw that he was talking to me, no one messed with me again. Cause they go based off of reputation. I think he's been there the longest. He's been there the longest. The longer you've been there, they don't mess with you. They're like, oh, this guy, he probably did something serious, you know? That's how What I, did he do? I don't know, I didn't ask, I didn't wanna ask. I just like, in my head, I'm just like, I know this guy, and that dude that tried to take my food, <laughs> he didn't mess with me ever, ever since then. Your protein. Yeah, he didn't touch my protein, my cornbread, but I still gave the cornbread to my buddy, my, my old friend. But I remember we had a talk, and he was talking about how he wanted to like, make his own like restaurant and stuff like that. He had a whole book full of recipes and ideas. He's been there for two years, so he came up with the oldest ideas. So it's like sad that, and I was encouraging too. I was like, man, you can do it. Like just get your life together. I was like giving him advice and I'm in jail doing stupid stuff. So I was just telling him, man, go for it. You're a good cook. You, you like, you're doing good, man. Just keep doing it. Get out of here and get your life together. I think he was talking about his daughter too. And he wanted to do it for her. But then uh, I told him like this is my last night, and I remember the next morning I hear bzzz, like Pastor Dodds, you're free to go. I'm like, oh my! I almost cried. You know, I I did cry when I got to the car. I remember the process to get out took like a, like three hours just to get out. Huh? Yeah, they have to process you out. They put you in this room. You sit there. I think I've sat there for like an hour. And you have to sit other places, they give you your stuff. And I remember seeing that big door open again, the one I came in, and I ran. <laughs> I ran to my car, and I sat there, and I cried. And I said, oh, man, I'm pulling my life together. Like, this is it. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing this car stuff anymore. Like, was like, I'm like, I'm done with this. And the first place I went to was, can you guys guess it? Your car. Uh, uh, did you eat? Yeah. You went to eat? I went to McDonald's. You went to McDonald's? <laughs> I went to McDonald's and I got a 50 piece. It's gonna be a lot to edit, but that is my prison experience. Any comments? Um, what did about? your parents think about oh, your accomplishment? They didn't know. I didn't tell my mom and dad. What? They didn't know that I was in prison. I remember looking at my phone, Dad. I don't think I had any missed calls from them. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that. Matt didn't even call you. No, I, Matt didn't even know. Oh yeah, we didn't hang out with you very much. Yeah, though. we were all kind of distant. That's like when I was like yeah. on my own type thing. So. No one knew I was in prison. I think I told mom like two years later. My dad didn't even know. What the heck? Yeah. You're terrible. It's also knowing your breakfast that no one really ever had to know. Yeah, exactly. If you guys enjoyed this story time, you guys want more like this, comment down below. Next time, Erica, you have to tell us a story. I don't have many stories. That bus one. No, I'm not going to tell a bus story. <laughs> I want to tell y'all. No, this. they're not in the yeah, bus yeah, story. Yeah, it's nasty. <laughs> what? He opened my high school one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> even better, dude. All right, guys, smash that like button. And if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Turn your post notifications so you guys get... <laughs> She's eating. Notified every single time we post a new video. But until the next video, guys. <laughs> Bye. Peace out. <laughs>